Welcome everybody to day one of the Tari series on the advent of code. So let's dive right in. We've got day one's problem set in front of us. And if we read the text, essentially what the problem amounts to is that there's a long list of numbers and we need to find two entries in the list that when added together add up to 220 and then we must multiply those two numbers together and supply that as the answer. All right, there's, um, there's an input, input data related to this problem that I've already gone and downloaded. Here it is. And the, the basic approach to solving this problem, as you might guess, is to have two loops running through this data, um, multiplying, uh, sorry, adding them together, checking to see if it adds up to 2020 and then returning the result. So normally you would put that together with two nested loops, but because this is a podcast or a series, a video series on idiomatic rust, we're going to try and do things a little differently um, that so that and try and highlight how expressive Rust code can be. Okay, so let's get let's kick off. Um, as we left off yesterday, the uh, we had the scaffolding program that is going to be calling through to the various problem sets. So, the first thing we want to do is create a library um, that's going to hold all the modules for the different days. So I'm going to create a new Rust file. at lib.rs and I want a module for day one if you're using IntelliJ there's a lot of nice uh, features that make managing your files and code structure in Rust a real dream and this is one of them and just you can just create sorry you can just create uh, the module automatically all right um, and uh, well, the first, there's two kind of main parts to solving this problem. The first one is to read in the data. And the second one is to uh, compute the results. So let's start off with um, a function that reads in the data. So um, I'm going to say as you watch the series, you'll realize that I am the world's worst typer. Let's read in the file. So there's um, we're going to be using the file system module from the standard library. There's a function called read to string. Okay. And this takes a path and it's assets slash day one a dot txt. Okay, and this is returning a result. So if there's something wrong with the the loading, I just want this to fail. Okay, uh, so what we have now is one long string. And this is the first kind of idiomatic Rust uh, feature that I'm going to demonstrate. So generally we can use a loop here, but you'll see this a lot in Rust, uh, is that we'd rather use iterators where we can. So there's a split function, as you might expect. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to convert those into, into integers. Uh, so um, there's something called a filter map. Now, what you will notice, let's have a look on this in the input data so the data is generally pretty clean there's no exceptions except on the last line here where uh, that's not a valid integer so what we want to do is loop through all these strings converting them into integers and just skip over any invalid data what we use a filter map for is to say well we want to do a conversion um, and if there's an issue then skip over it so if filter map returns a none then it, it will not be passed through to the next section of the iterator. If it returns some value, then that value gets passed through. And so we can say s.parse, which is a 
going to convert our string into a u size and we're almost done s.parse returns a result and I wanted to turn an option so there's a function on result called ok which converts from a result to an option ok and and I, want, and I essentially want to uh, collect all these together. Okay, and that is set. I get rid of that semicolon. Read data is now going to return a vec of strings. Uh, sorry, vec of new sizes. Okay, and IntelliJ seems happy. So let's move on to the next part. So. Let's call it um, day one a. And we want to first get these values. Okay. And this is where instead of using a loop, I want to compare every pair of values with in this vector. So I've got a vector of integers and I want to compare all the different combinations. Now there's a very nice crate called iterTools that adds that exact functionality to, to iterators. And so let's go ahead and bring that crate in. So I'm going to create a dependency on iterTools. I think the latest version is 0 0.9. And all I need to do to make use of that is to is to import the extended trait into the namespace. Okay, so now I can say um, values dot iter dot. Now there should be a new function, a new. Uh, yeah, a new function called combinations that I can use on that iterator, which will produce a pairwise, create a pairwise. Um, well, it's actually, a, I can say how many values I want to create combinations of from that vector. So I'm, I want to just create two, and then I'm going to find vectors and that will that v will now have two values in it and i want to say if v0 plus v1 is equal to 2020 i don't need to do if i just provide a predicate there and this will pass that through and now i will have a vector where the elements add up to 2020 and so now I must just map it and I want to return the product of that so there's a nice feature again using rust iterators where I say iterator.product and that we are just about done okay so let's get this as a result. Okay, so result's still an option. So what all we want to do now is say, well, if the result is some value, uh, let's convert that to a string and otherwise and we want to return this to the calling program all right let's jump to main and just call day one Alright, let's see if this runs. Okay, so 
So uh, the product the product needs to know that this is a U size. Okay, and make that sound better. Okay, and now we've just got a few reference issues. So the first of all, this must be a string. Can't do into it here. Let's just see. Okay. Let's run this and check if this is the correct answer. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at part two in a second. All right, now the second part of this problem wants you to find three entries that add up to 2020 and multiply the results. So usually in the advent of code, the second part of the problem is a more general version of the first part. And what's nice is that our approach using the combinations uh, lends itself to generalization quite easily. So let's pull this into a new method. Okay, and what we want to do here is have a parameter that says how many combinations, how many entries need to add up to 220. And instead of saying v0 plus v1, we want to take the sum. So the v dot iter dot sum equals 2020. Okay, now uh, the same as with product, we're going to have to say what the type is. And if you look at the code sense here, you see that it's returning references to use sizes. So I think we have to also just create a copy of each element so that uh, we're adding u sizes, not references to u sizes. And I think that should do it. So day 1a is find expenses for 2. And day 1b is find expenses for 3. OK, so if we add day 1b to a problem set, Let's see if this does the trick. So does day 1a work? Yes, it gives us the same answer as before. And day 1b gives us the solution. And let's stick that into advent of code and see if it's correct. Woohoo! Well, there we go. So as a quick recap, let's just have a look at what we've done. So instead of using nested loops to solve this problem, we've tried to use some idiomatic Rust where we, and in particular, used the iter tools crate, which has a nice method called combinations, which takes an iterator and gives you the any number of combinations, an iteration through all the combinations on that, on that vector. Uh, so it's much more clear as to what we're doing um, versus having nested loops. And it also generalizes much more easily. We don't have to add another loop at all. The same function can be used for both uh, parts of the problem. Uh, and so that's very nice and succinct. 
once we have the combinations, actually solving the problem uses two more iterators and, and functional programming principles. The one is that we uh, use the find method to look for uh, a, a pair or a set of numbers that match our condition, which is that the sum must be 2020. And then finally, we, once we find that, we convert that result into the answer, which is the product of that vector. And so we use the product method on the iterator itself and return that back to the main program. And that's basically the summary of day one's problems. See you next time for day two. Bye.